Hello, in this video we are going to look at an implementation of bubble sort in Python 3. It's probably very similar as Python 2, but just so you know I'm working on Python 3. So I'm going to write this actually as a definition, so as a function. So I'm going to say def bubble sort and I'm going to call my parameter list. There we go. So all I can do here is I'm just going to call bubble sort and I'm going to pass it list. So obviously right now this does nothing. Print bubble sorting. Um, so I'm going to run this. Oh, pardon me, that's my last one. Let's run this. So bubble sorting doesn't do anything. So let's well, let's take this list and we're going to print out the list before we sort. And we're going to print out the list after we sort. And there's our list before we sort. And now we're applying the bubble sort. We're bubble sorting and then there's the list after. Obviously, it's not sorted because we have no code in here. Really critical idea to understand here is that remember that lists are reference variables. So that means when I pass this list into this function, I don't need to return it for those changes to take effect. If I make any modification to the parameter, those changes are permanent because I'm not passing a new copy of the list. I'm passing a reference to where the list is. This is a really critical idea, and if you don't understand this, I do recommend you go back and look at one of my videos that talks about reference variables. It becomes particularly important when you start dealing with classes and objects. But just to kind of highlight it one more time, if I say list at 0 equals 99, and I run this, you'll notice that before the function, list at 0 is 4, and after the function, list at 0 is 99. So a bubble sort consists of two nested loops. The outer loop controls the number of passes needed to sort everything. So the way this works is that, remember, with the bubble sort, we imagine this bubble kind of moving across the list, and then every time it compares the two elements and swaps them. And each pass is going to ensure that each pass of the bubble sorts one element. Right? The idea that largest element is bubbling to the surface. You can take a look at that here. And we'll just rewind this quickly. So here's my first pass. This bubble is moving along and what's happening is it's actually sorting. It's pulling the largest value to the top. And so once this pass is done, there we go, the largest element now is at the top. So that's one pass. It's going to move. Each pass is going to move one element. Now I need to do this twice, three times, four times, five times, but I don't actually have to do it a sixth time because by the fifth time with six elements, I only have one element left, so I know this last element must be in the position. So the number of passes that are needed for a bubble sort, the number of passes is the length of the, of the list minus one. And let's actually write this using code form. So let's set out my edits. So for i in range, and I'm going to go from 0 to len of list minus 1. We're going to commit by 1. And actually, let's, make, let's call this pass. Oh, that's a reserved word. Um, let's call this k. There we go. So now, the inner loop is moving the bubble along. So we're going to set again another loop and we're going to say for i in range and again in my example I start i at index 0 and I compare the element to the right of it. So i is going to be set to 0 and I'm going to go to the length of the list minus 1. Now the reason why I'm going to go to the length of the list minus 1 is because is because if we come back here and run through this again, notice as it moves across, it only has to reach the second last element. If we, if we move that bubble one more, one more spot over, it's going to be the 8 and then have nothing over here to compare. So, and then I'm going to compare them. I'm going to say if list at i is greater than list at i plus 1, we swap them. So we say temp is equal to list at i 
list at i is equal to list at i plus 1, and list at i plus 1 is equal to 10. Now, if we've done this right, this should work. So let's, let's give this a run and see if, we're, see if it worked. And there we go. There's my sorted list. Now, I will point out that even though this works, it's taking bubble sort, which is an inefficient algorithm to start with, and it's making it even more inefficient. And my, sec my, my inefficiency is a second loop. That bubble, every time, is moving to the very end of the list, and that's not necessary. If we take a look again at this, this PowerPoint presentation, by the end of my first pass, my largest element is at the end. So my second pass, there we go, my second pass only has to go to the second last element. And then my third pass goes one less than that, and my fourth pass goes one less than that. So what I can do in my internal loop is I'm going to say the length of the list minus 1, but I'm also going to minus k. And what that does is on the first pass, k is 0, so I'm going to go to that very end, and then k is 1, 2, 3. And I'll run this, and it still works, but the beautiful part is that is that I'm actually reducing the number of steps required for this information to be sorted. And that's an example of the bubble sort. Very easy modification if you want to sort it instead of ascending order and descending order. You just swap that inequality sign. And now you have a descending list. So I hope this video helped. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Have a wonderful day.